is a tulo, and they come in many different shapes and sizes. But this one is where we're staying for the next few days. And as we explore the charming village of Hukeng in Fujian province, we are bringing you along for the ride. Wow, this is the second biggest tulo in the world. So hot. Oh, oh, oh. So join us as we get acquainted with village life. Could be mushroom. Soak up the local customs. Make friends with a lively cast of characters. Feel like Jesus just uh, picked up more <laughs> disciples as they travel. Make deals with the local mafia. Yeah, yeah, you know. And of course, learn more about what it's like to live in a 400 year old former fortress, which these days is more like a socialist utopia. Sounds totally dreamy, right? Well, we actually almost never made it here at all. We were actually supposed to be in Guangxi, on the other side of China, but thanks to a sudden change of plans... Jack? Yeah? Have you seen this? Oh no... And a last minute brainwave... <laughs> we found ourselves on a flight to Xiamen, having done little in the way of research or preparation, or navigation for that matter. Wow, look at this. It looks so idyllic. And then you're greeted with these huge fortresses. I'm just like, I cannot wait to get inside. Fortress, you ask? Well, we'll touch on the history a little later. First, we need to find our home for the next few nights. I'm a bit scared to go in, it's just someone's house, isn't it? Well, it's going to be our house for the next few days. Yes, it is indeed. And don't worry, we're going to give you a full tour of our Tulo Gaff a little later. But first, we need to find our room and pay off the local lads to protect us. <laughs> oh, and there they are on the second floor as well. Arlo. Yeah, I think we'll get our friends here our whole stay, aren't we? Now, let's go find some lunch. We've got a whole pack with us. Yeah, boys, the boys. <laughs> ah, <'cause it's> <laughs> Rice, tofu, greens. I think the local diet is going to suit Jack. Oh. And a cook for dessert, of course. <laughs> oh, wow. The local racket even controls the prices in this little village. And what a village it is. The Tulos you see here are ancient fortresses which double as communal homes, built by the Hakka people of southern China. This beautiful village, Hukeng, is home to some of China's best preserved Tulos, which, thanks to strict government protection and UNESCO World Heritage status, has been spared from commercialization. It is such a privilege to be here and I can't wait to explore more. Although, only we could show up somewhere, it'd be absolutely beautiful blue skies, and then it starts absolutely pissing it down. Okay, I think we're good. I will let Jack keep the little tinkers occupied whilst I have a nosy around the gaff. So this is where we're staying for the next few days. This is the Tulo and it is absolutely amazing. I'm standing in the courtyard and it goes all around me. So it's not a roundhouse one, it is a rectangular one. So it looks a little bit different inside. But basically, there's all this communal area and all the families live around the outside and they all have their own section and all the rooms are pretty much exactly the same. Okay? We've made lots and lots of friends already because there's lots of kids living in this pool. So they're very interested in what we're doing and we've been playing some games with them <laughs> and having lots of fun so far. Anyway, these kids are wired. So I reckon we should take them out to burn off some energy and we can show you the house a little later. So we've got our own personal tour guides. Yeah. So many uh, little dalyos, yeah. The gang seems to have chosen Jack as their new leader. So I guess that leaves me to tell you more about these amazing Tulo structures. 
So you can find tulas in slightly different shapes and sizes. You can find them round, like this one behind me, and also you can find them rectangular, like the one that we're staying in, which is this one. All in all, there are 13 tulos in this village, varying in age from 60 to 500 years old. I want to explore each and every one over the coming days, but I feel a bit awkward as we are seemingly the only visitors in the village and it feels a bit odd simply walking into other people's homes. But hopefully, Jack's newfound guangxi with the local junior mafia will be our ticket inside and give us VIP access. So we were a little bit scared to go inside this round tulo because it's not where we're staying but the kids just walked straight in because I guess this is their village so everyone's pretty friendly and they're part of the village so we just followed them So we've had a little wander around the village. Jack, what are your first impressions? It's quite actually chaotic, wasn't it? With all the families, all the kids and things. How have you found it so far? Yeah, I agree. Like the community living is very intense when you're in the Tulo, but it's also very nice. Like we live yeah. in the Hutongs. We love living around a community. We love having other people around us. So it's very nice, but like the Tulo is all surrounded by this beautiful, beautiful nature. And I see a nice little stream and I think we should go and have a little wander down there. Yeah, let's go have a little look. Oh my God, cuteness yeah. overload incoming. Oh my gosh. What time is it, Jack? It's drone time. Oh yeah. Looking looks even more beautiful from the air. But if there's one thing we've learned about village life, it's that dinner time is strictly a deer too. And if you miss it because you're chasing golden hour, well, you'll be going to bed hungry. Better hurry. Baby hi. These are our friends. <laughs> So we were just saying how fresh we thought this food was and then she came over and we told her it was really tasty and she invited us into a vegetable garden. How rude of us, we never introduced her. This lovely lady is Azu, our host for the next few days. She operates a kind of tea vendor come restaurant from the front room of her house and is all too happy to cook up a tasty veggie dinner for any weary traveller happening to be passing through the village. And of course, after dinner, out comes a bottle of the local homemade plonk. Oh, that's quite nice. This is a meat. This is also meat, but it's not meat. In the winter, this will And then, another one. Oh, this is actual whiskey. <laughs> 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 I really don't like it. This is good. I really like this. Yes, this is good. Oh. <laughs> it's high. Yeah. And you know another thing that I love about village life? That we get to go to bed early. Yeah, go to bed early, up early. Everyone's kind of on the same sort of vibe. So yeah. with that in mind, I reckon we should maybe uh, hit the hay because we've got a pretty early mission tomorrow, haven't we? Yeah, we are going to try and get up for sunrise. I say going to because we have tried that in the past. Insert clip here. <clears throat> oh, man. Got up at 5 a.m. Of quarter past five. And it's absolutely pissing it down. And it hasn't always worked out for us. So fingers crossed, it's not gonna rain. And we're gonna make it on time. Let's see. Jesus just uh, picked up more <laughs> disciples as I travel. These are my new followers for today. It's very friendly on chat. But Jack had better break the heartbreaking news to his new mates that they won't be joining us on today's mission. It's half a day and it is hot, hot, hot right now. We did not get up for sunrise. 
Why did we not get off a sunrise track? Because the, our very kind and gracious host plied us with all kinds of tasty, delicious local tea last night, yeah. which they assisted mm -hmm. didn't have any caffeine in. Mm -hmm. But obviously, being tea, it didn't mean that we were wired and didn't really sleep at all. Yeah, so we yeah, missed the sunrise, yeah. and now it's bloody hot in it. But it is hot. we've got a noodle full of bellies, <laughs> a mouthful full of coke. And a head full of nothing, it seems. <laughs> a noodle full of belly soup, dear. We are on our way to somewhere very special, and it's just beautiful countryside all around us. So we've been walking basically to the next village in the boiling hot sun because we came to see this. Wow, look at this. This is the second biggest tulo in China, which basically means the second biggest tulo in the world. Very excited to go inside and see what it's like compared to the other ones that we've seen so far. Like, it's just so high. Look how high it is. Wow, this is just so amazing. I, I feel like I'm in the middle of like the amphitheater on Gladiator and this is all the stage behind me. So as you can see in this Tulo, there are four different floors. So there's four levels and on the ground level is usually the kitchen. On the second level, it's like a barn with storage. And on the third and fourth, it's living quarters. Now each family gets their own section of the Tulo. So all the rooms are exactly the same and they have one room on each floor. So in this Tulo, they actually have some more buildings inside the communal area. So they have this, which is like a barn area, and they also have this, which is an ancestral hall for people to pray to their ancestors. Oh look, this one's got two doors. I thought they normally only had one for security. Yeah, they do, but this one's so big that I needed two. Maybe this is the door you bring your concubines in. <laughs> Oh, so, Mrs., what did you think of not just the second biggest Tulo in Fujian, China, but the world? Well, I think it was really impressive, especially from the outside. Like, it's just absolutely massive. Now, I think that these Tulos are really cool architecturally, but also culturally. Even though it's meant to be the second biggest one, I don't think it's the most visited one by any means because we haven't seen anybody else. And that's probably because we are the only people dumb enough to travel to the south of China in the middle of summer. But unfortunately, this village has little in the way of restaurants. So we had better plow on in search of the only refreshments it has to offer. So this village is famous for its tulo, but what's lesser known is that it has a long tradition in making rice whiskey. And we're gonna go and have a look at the distillery. So this family has been making rice wine and whiskey for three generations. That must be some pretty good alcohol. And if we play our cards right, he might just let us taste it. Bottom shelf stuff like this would definitely give you a headache, wouldn't it? I've got my eye on this uh, mulberry wine. So the owner's very kind and has not only brought us a little cup of tea, but also a shot of his mulberry wine, which I said earlier I wanted to try. Oh, it's more like a liqueur. Good. It took us a long me too. I think what it is is basically sticky rice whiskey. Oh, looks like you're right about that, Jack. You can literally see the rice. Oh, that's a lot stronger. And now, let's take it up a notch. This one's 52%. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I never expected that. And I didn't think I would be spending the midday heat absolutely off my tits say either. But <laughs> I think we should go find some food to try and uh, soak up the yeah, alcohol in the stomach. Yeah, good luck with that. What have we got for lunch then, missus? We've got some polos. <laughs> we've got two lollipops. Shrimp strips? I'm okay for shrimp strips. We've got some cola sweets and these are like spicy rice. I'm gonna give it a whirl. We'll get a can of Pepsi and that's lunch. You going to do you and I eat? That seems really cheap. What a stunning village. And for our lunch spot, we picked... Well, it's not quite the lunch spot I wanted, but there's not much shade around. So we're actually under a bridge. <laughs> Cheers. The flavour goes so fast and then you're know, just left with like chewy gluten, it's horrible mess. Wow, that is sweet. It's so hot. I luckily remember to bring an umbrella, but Jack has had to resort to um, a banana leaf. How's that working out for you? Yeah, I found this on the floor and it's bloody beautiful. <laughs> it's actually saving my bacon, isn't it? Oh, missus, we made it back. I think we should try and have a little dip our feet in this river. It looks very refreshing because I am so hot right now. Oh, so nice. Oh, 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 it's like standing on Lego. So refreshing. It's a little bit too hot to be out, I feel. Yeah, Getting I think we should go food. back inside and come back out when it's a bit cooler. Needless to say, after the mission, we were absolutely knackered. But luckily, this village, like many other in China, strictly observes the sacred ritual of nap time. The village falls silent as everybody retreats inside the well-insulated walls of their tulos. There's no need to set an alarm clock either. Just wait for the eyes to start shouting on and you'll know it's time to get up. Anyway, now seems a good time to give you a tour of our wonderful living quarters. Welcome to our Tulo house. This is the communal area where you can sip some tea, drink some coffee, or enjoy some delicious local fruit. At the other side of the room is this wash area, and that's the ground floor. Let me show you upstairs. Here is the lounge area where you can chill out, do some yoga, and listen to the relaxing sounds of the Tulo. And overlooking this beautiful courtyard is the bedroom. Let me show you. Pretty comfy, right? Well, the interior was lovingly refurbished by our friends at Laoja, an awesome organization with several homestays across rural China. I'll pop that link in the description in case you'd like to stay here yourself. But despite all the hard work they've put into restoring this amazing space, I think they'd be the first to admit that it's the connections with local people that make the stay here in Hooking Village so enriching. I can't help but feel incredibly grateful for the warm hospitality we've received from our neighbors. This village and its warm-hearted inhabitants make the perfect antidote to busy city life. And another thing that we're thankful for is the fact that the sun's gone down, it's, you know, getting late, we're staying in this amazing village so we can explore everything when the sun's gone down. Let's go explore, missus. Yeah! This one looks very new compared to the one that we saw today. I think this is one of the newer Tulos because it's so well maintained. Well, there you go. It's amazing to think that this style of architecture is so effective that the building techniques and materials have remained virtually unchanged for centuries. 
Anyway, dinner is calling and then we need an early night because ever since we arrived, everybody has been telling us we need to go up to the lookout point at sunrise. The sun hasn't come past the mountain, so we're hoping we're gonna make it up to the top to the lookout point just in time, right? Yeah, because if not, we'll be walking along this bloody road again for nothing. <laughs> We made it to the top. Oh my God, how stunning is this? It's absolutely stunning. Like, I'm so pleased we got up for that. And the sun's just about to come around the mountain. So we need to take some shots. We need to get the drone out to get some sick B-roll for you guys. Yeah. I mean, we say we're doing it for you guys, but really, this one's for us. And she won't tell you herself, but today is Nico's birthday. So wish her a happy birthday, guys. Yeah, and what better way to celebrate another trip around the sun than watching the sunrise with my favorite guy, whilst he ignores me and chats to his new mates about cameras. What a morning. But sadly, even here in paradise, we are still forced to make a trip to the local town for a stiff reality check. So even though we are in the idyllic countryside, we still need to drive to the nearest town to get a COVID test so that we can get our flights tomorrow. Well, I guess if it doesn't show up in our dinkum bao, we'll have to stay in paradise a little bit longer. Although, yeah, I'm not sure my legs could handle it, to be honest. <laughs> yep, the little bastards have been absolutely savaging me the past few days. In fact, the foreigner with the mosquito-ravaged legs is the talk of the village, and all the eyes have been very concerned. <laughs> And before any of you comment to tell me that I should be using bug spray, I was literally doused in the stuff. They just love the sweet taste of me. So where to we now then, missus? Just want to just chill, really get at one with the village life. Look at me, just a couple of days in and I'm already getting into the swing of things. As most of the working age population has left to work in the big cities, the remaining old folks tend to get their farming chores out of the way in the cool early morning air before spending the rest of the day sitting with their mates, drinking tea, playing as part of mahjong, or simply watching the world slowly go by. To be honest, I'm kind of dreading going back to Beijing. I could easily stay in this little spot of paradise forever. Oh my God, Jack, it looks like it's going to be another perfect golden hour. Oh, how many of these have we had this week? We've actually had a couple, which is quite surprising because we usually were quite unlucky with the weather, but it's been pretty, been pretty good, albeit a little bit too hot if you ask me, but that's because summer in China is too hot. What are you going to do, eh? There's plenty of nice streams to cool off in at least. Or natural springs. Oh, that's so good. After a hot day it's outside. Yeah, it has been the most perfect weekend and we couldn't have done this without our friends at Laoja. We've loved getting to experience local life here in the village and it's been super interesting to learn more about the Tulo culture. This trip was a little bit last minute so we didn't actually do as much research as we would have liked. So it's been fascinating to speak to the locals, hasn't it? Yeah, I've really enjoyed like learning more just about just what life in the Tulos is really like, but from their perspective. So much so in fact that we actually decided why not make a whole film de dedicated to the history of the Tulos, yes. told from the people's perspective who know it best. Yes, yeah, so join us next week when we tell you more about the Tulos, how they were built, why they were built, and speak to the locals about it. So on that note, like, comment and subscribe. See you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.